this video, you're going to learn lots of vocabulary that you can use the next time that you're sick. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. The first expression you need is to be sick. Notice this is a be verb. So you would say, I'm sick. Oh, I'm sick today. Now, if you're talking about an illness in the past, you could say, I was sick. So remember, it's a be verb. So your verb to be is going to change. She, she's sick. Of course, our verb needs to match our subject. So you can simply say, I'm sick, but then you can give more information and describe why, why you're sick. And there are really two main causes. So you can say, I have a cold. Oh, I have a cold. I have a terrible cold. So you can use an adjective to describe the severity. I have an awful cold. I have the worst cold in the world. But notice our verb is have. So in the past, it would be last week, I had a terrible cold. Now, the other cause is the flu. So you would say, I have the flu. Now, interestingly, we don't usually modify this with an adjective because the flu is always terrible. So you don't really need to say it. We usually just say, I have the flu and notice, we use different articles. We actually say, I have a cold, but we say, I have the flu. So keep that in mind, different articles are used. Now, another good verb that you should know is to catch, to catch a cold. And this is when you go from not having a cold to having a cold, okay? So often you'll hear this as advice, for example, don't go outside without a sweater, you'll catch a cold. And you could say, oh, I caught a terrible cold, which would mean now you're sick because you caught a cold. So you have that cold now. Now let's talk about some symptoms. So symptoms are how you feel when you're sick, okay? so. The most common one is a fever. I have, we would use the verb have, I have a fever. You could say I have a really high. For fever, we describe it as high or low, but we really only talk about it when it's high. I have a high fever. Now, you could also say temperature. I have a temperature. Both of them are used. Fever is a lot more common, so you can use that one. I have a fever. Another common symptom is a sore throat. I have a sore throat. And of course, that's when it hurts to swallow, it hurts to eat, it's scratchy, it's painful. I have a sore throat. Now, let's talk about your nose, the other thing that is affected by a cold or the flu. Now, if you can't breathe, you can't smell, and nothing's coming out, you would say, I have a stuffed. Listen to the pronunciation. I have a stuffed, stuffed, t, t, ends on a T. I have a stuffed nose. I have a stuffed nose. We also say plugged. Listen to the pronunciation, plugged, plugged. I have a plugged nose. Both are pretty common. I have a stuffed nose, I have a plugged nose. I would say probably stuffed is more common. Now the opposite of a stuffed nose is when, you know, you have to blow your nose constantly and that would be a runny, a runny, runny. I have a runny nose. I have a runny nose. I have a stuffed nose. 
I have a runny nose. Usually it's one or the other, not both at the same time. Now the final symptom that's really common, usually with the flu, is ooh, the chills, the chills. Here we use the article the. I have the chills and it's plural, it's with an S. So this is when you're hot, you're cold, you're hot, you're cold. I have the chills. That's the worst, I hate that one. So those are all the symptoms I can think of. So now it's your turn to practice. Why don't you tell us about the last cold you had, or maybe it was the flu, and you can tell us about your symptoms. So you have to think about your verb, you have to think about your verb tense and your article choice as well. So leave that in the comments and hey, maybe you could also provide some advice for when somebody's sick. That could be fun as well. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends and of course subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, jforestenglish.com and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. My advice to you when you're sick, I would say make sure you get plenty of rest and drink plenty of water. That would be my advice to you. So I can't wait to read your comments talking about your last cold and some advice as well. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.